Hmm. Okay, for now, we have a 10 question like uh, for our, kita buka open question yang tu, ada fans nak tanya you, Adam. Ah. Uh, so, sebelum ni soalan 10 yang kita dah pilih lah, yang terbaik. Okay. So, untuk soalan first, uh, you punya, you ada follow tak uh, Liga Malaysia and what your favourite club in Malaysia Super League? I have friends who play here, so I'm, if anything, I would have to say it because where I'm from is Selangor. But, yeah, I, Selangor, I guess, uh, would be my first team. But I like watching KL play because I worked a lot with Stanley and mm. when he was doing pundit work. Yes. So I'm I'm a bit biased to Stan because <laughs> I want him to do well, you know. But Stanley so. also a good person and they had a, what are they? Vision and mission. For yeah, them. and I'm really impressed with what they did. You know, to win a trophy last year was, wow. It was a, a I personally great think Stanley akan akan jadi somebody yang sangat berjaya dalam management. Yeah. So, eh, I try to watch when I can, like, um, the last two Wednesdays, Selangor, last three, Selangor been playing, so I stream it while I'm playing futsal. So, there's three teams, when I come off, then I'm watching, then I go back on and watch it. <laughs> yeah. For next, next question, uh, your favourite player? Uh, All time, favourite player, local. Local and, and local. Local, uh, local, local. Karu Vami. I still love, playing? I know he's still playing and I was obsessed to him because of all the success he had. Because you play goalkeeper, team. right? I play as a goalkeeper, uh, so I'm more drawn to goalkeepers. But I was just, he's always, I've interviewed him, he's always been nice to me. I think he's grown as a person as well because I met him when he was really young and now he's matured into a more of a leader within the team. Mm. And I remember when Malaysia played and he was playing and it was like uh, friendlies against teams that travel here. And I'm very lucky I was given like pitch side access. I just stood like behind his goal and watched him see how he does things. And near Sama Haid Saya, tapi dia boleh clean crosses, everything. I was like, okay, <laughs> ada hope. <laughs> ah, international? international? All-time favorite? Okay, yes, yes. I wanted to say, I got too many. Like growing up, the 90s, Schmeichel and David Seaman are my favorites. Love them. In the 2000s, when I was older, Ike Casillas. Okay, no lah, kalau you buat fantasy team untuk all-time players, siapa yang letak keeper? Oh, <laughs> I have to go Schmeichel, I think. Oh, shit. But the other one is Messi, if we're not talking goalkeepers. Messi. Oh, I love Messi. Love him. Okay. Ah, ni. Ah, dah cakap apa dulu? Kan kita tengok? PK. Ah, okay. After PK, you go to DJ Radio announcer. Yeah. So, after that, you go to sport. Sport. Yeah. So, entertainment to sport, what the different and... It's the same thing, really. Um, I went into sports because I have a love for sports and I grew up watching football and talking about football with friends. But it's the same thing. You're just trying to create content which people would want to watch. It's the same principle, just a different topic which in this case is sport. Tapi one thing lah, I cakap, bukan sebab you ada kat sini. Tapi you mungkin mungkin tak tak boleh tak boleh percaya I cakap. Sebab the way I tengok you masa dekat Kiki, I macam terdetik. Dia ni natural. Uh, thank you. Maybe one day dia akan jadi somebody. Hey. I must do I think nice. macam tu. Thank you, thank you. I was, <laughs> first, I was, firstly, I memang minat Marion lah. I, <laughs> then you ada sebelah Marion. Okay. I cakap, dia ni natural. I terfikir, you mesti jadi somebody. Now, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was 18 when I started on the quickie. And I I wasn't planning on it. I was here on my gap year. I was supposed to go study law. <laughs> and then someone said, hey, there's this new channel called ATV. You should go try audition for a show. So I went in. And the next day, they called me and offered me the job. And I auditioned with Marion. And they liked it, thankfully. <laughs> and she was also the producer at the time. One of the producers. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> so after, sekarang ni, selain host, apa yang you buat dari you punya... I just want to develop more content, really. I think yeah. there's, nowadays, from when I started to now, you've got YouTube, you've got Twitch. There's so many avenues and people can be as creative as they want to create content. Simple as that. Simple. Apa yang you ada kat media sosial boleh you bagi tahu untuk people follow? Oh, is it my name like Adam Carruthers I think on most of my social media. Yeah. Ini yeah. So- soalan kelima ni memang soalan yang aku nak tanya. Ah, okay. Okay, masih ada contact Marion sebab sama-sama kerja di Quickie dulu. Apa pengalaman dengan dia? <laughs> I'll tell you a number of air. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's Marion like and stuff? You mean? Uh, apa apa yang seronoknya bekerja dengan Marion? Ada was... you masih contact dia lagi? Uh, here and there, here and there but She's a mother, right? Yes. Like three kids mm. and stuff. So she's busy. But every time I see her, it's like no time has passed at all. Uh, no, she was great. She was a really good producer. But there came a point, I think she had to choose between hosting and producing. And mm. she opted to go for that. 
But she joined ATV as a producer. She was one of the earliest members of staff I there. I see. Uh, Izam Omar, I think, was number one. And then I think her her tag was like number four or five. Really good producer. It's what she studied. It's what her passion was. And she was always fun to work with. Always fun. Always laughed. And yeah, I think she's great. I really think she's great. The next question. Uh, I think dulu you what host football dengan Roshan. And yes. now with Michelle, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, so uh, Roshan boy, I think does ada business sendiri sekarang. Yes. So do you think, um, apa plan you untuk jangka panjang? Adakah you akan buka planning untuk business you sendiri juga ke? Ataupun maybe you selesa for now in front of camera? Um, I would like to produce content. I would like to use my experience to help to produce content. So that's something I would definitely have to look into in the long run. Just finding out my niche. But to be honest, right? You asked me earlier if I would go to Sky Sports or anything. Uh, BBC. Uh, BBC. I mean, it's the, the name is there, yes. And it's historic. But I just feel sometimes we do stuff in Malaysia which they cannot do. And I think we do it better. Like all our pitch side stuff, we go there, the way we do it, suddenly we got, I see our work being used as an example to all the other broadcasters. Maybe you will share, but you will share before this, young, after the, <coughs> all the broadcasts. Are They're all standing uh, there. Malaysia tak ada, kita kena kita tahu. Maybe yeah. you can share. Uh, it'd be cool that they did it here. So side of the pitch, after a match, sometimes it's in the tunnel, but because okay. of COVID now, they try because open air, do it at the side of the pitch. So they'll put the, the board, you know, the sponsor, whatever you have okay. to, there, and they'll have multiple ones. So the player will come out. Need to go one by one. One by one by one. But usually there'll be like three players for each club or two players, depending. So one player will do like the first and third, and then the other one will do the second and fourth, whatever. And they'll go mm. and, and talk. Even That's the team kalah pun uh, need to go like, need to, yeah, you're supposed, you have uh. to give an interview, but sometimes they'll just do it in the tunnel if they've lost badly or something. And the manager has to speak as well. Uh, because the, the way I think it's usually done here, they have the like the flash zone. So as the players come out, you have people behind the guardrail trying to speak. Sometimes they answer, sometimes they don't. Yeah. But this one is actual recording space and the players are brought there to speak to whoever. And I think it'd be good oh. for Malaysian fans after, I don't know, Trungano, Penang, KL play, and then play come to speak properly like that. I think it'll be a big step up. Good, so professionalism dekat Malaysia mungkin So, ramai lagi player yang masih takut untuk bercakap uh, tak because sampai... in England they're all given training yeah they're all it's professionalism yang kita kena at a young age they're all given training or if a player comes to a club they will be trained as well but the youth team they're all given courses on how to speak they're all I remember wow. Liverpool came here and they also brought a youth team so they sent us to interview and the guys were like okay the media guys at Liverpool said we're trying to train them So try to give them a bit of a hard time, ask them some hard questions. Oh, this is when they were still youth players, so it wasn't going to go out. That's how it has to be done, though, right? You have to. Dekat sini jangan tanya lebih lebih. Who wants us? Jangan tanya lebih lebih. But it's, it's like I don't know if you find that, but I think like Carol Palmi is a better just because I've mentioned his mm. name is a better talker now than when he started. I think he was a bit shy before, so you have to be able to say what you're thinking. But yeah, going back to the pitch side thing, honestly. I think we do it better than some of these other broadcasters. I really do. And the fact that our ideas are being copied. Malaysia boleh, right? There you go. Next question. Next question. Ada orang tanya, uh, Michelle, you punya kawan. Before this, before they join tu, adakah dia memang tahu pasal bola? Ataupun tak tahu? So, kalau... She's dia... always been a United fan. <laughs> she's always been. Like, I think she's cursed Man United. No? Because... When uh, she doing four match? No, no, because she... <laughs> Very when she covers a match, they very rarely win when she's there in person. <laughs> so we kind of make fun of her. And I remember, I think they went to Thailand in not this trip, but uh, after they won the last title, I think 2014, maybe the summer they won the title. She went, and I think they lost. So ever since then, it's been a thing whereby if she's there in person, chances are United will not win. <laughs> she's always been a Manchester United fan. I can tell you that. For right now, you're putting out the knowledge about football improvement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Michelle? Oh, definitely. She works incredibly hard. She works really, really hard. And you have to take your hat off to her. That is an example of hard work right there. So next question. Uh, ada tak mana-mana maybe pada college or other media panggil you untuk bagi talk about your career? Selain daripada kita um, orang panggil. A couple of times, yeah. A couple of times about broadcasting and I have 
couple during COVID lockdowns, so I'll just go into the Zoom conversation. But I, in the past, I've been to a couple of like colleges just to, to go and talk. But usually with some other people there as well. What your advice to maybe yang nak jadi seperti you ataupun nak join industry of football yang baru-baru nak If you want to do what I'm doing specifically, just be confident. Uh, just prepare. Hard work is key. But like you said I'm a natural, right? Yes, I can talk in that sense. I'm a natural, but you still have to do a lot of work. I'm always watching football. I'm always reading. I'm always even when I was driving here, or I drive anywhere. I listen to podcasts. I listen to, <laughs> to football podcasts from the UK mainly, and from the Athletic and all these places. The Guardian. I consume as much as I can at all wow. times. That's key. Hard work is key, and the preparation is key. Yeah. Dedication. So, this is preparation right here. All the questions. Have, right? <laughs> this is this is considered preparation. <laughs> for the second last question for hobby, Mister Lapang, you what you doing? Video games. I play a lot of futsal, so I play three times a week. Um, Sini kah mana? Last night I played in Sports Planet Subang. Oh. Now, it's, now it's actually changed. It's called um, Republic of Futsal, so they've changed ownership. But usually Mondays I play at Sports Barn. Which is very near here, and then Wednesdays I play at Sports Garage, which is opposite Sports Barn and same management, oh. also near here. And Thursdays I play at Enfield, the open air. Enfield. Kita selalu main Enfield juga. Oh, you play as well. Uh, Suka, so, right? Nice. So, so boleh ya kita family. <laughs> yeah, I'm 37 now, so not as fast as I used to be. But I'm just trying to lose weight. Lockdown, I put on a lot of weight. So since coming out, I've lost 16 kg, one six. So diet and exercise. Whoa. I go, I go running, walking, futsal, and I had a strict diet. So now my weight has gone down. Uh, gift it, gift it. <laughs> Discipline. You said you don't have kids, so you still got time. Okay. Boleh. Betul, betul, betul. Okay, soalan terakhir daripada peminat. Opportunity. Oh, ini tadi actually kita dah tanya dah. Ada tak sebelum ni uh, company-company besar macam BBC, SPN approach you? Sebelum ni dah pernah belum? To join them. To join them? Uh, if they pay a lot, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, depending. It really depends. Like I've done some like freelance work. Like I appeared as a guest on Talksport UK, mm -hmm. so they'll call me on Zoom. I've done one or two interviews with the BBC World Service, uh, Premier League uh, Productions, Premier League TV. I've done work for them as well. So if the opportunity comes, yeah. But I love the team I work with here. And when, I know we're much smaller than what's available overseas, but I really feel that our content is as good as what's done out there. Honestly. Oh. I nak tanya you, sebab kita nak tahu media sana, budaya sana. Adakah dia ambil tahu uh, kehidupan player itu di luar padang juga? Mm -hmm. Maksudnya... Dia jadikan news. Dia jadikan news juga. Kehidupan, maksudnya Last bukan setakat permainan, permainan je lah, performa atas padang, luar padang, Last family time. dia. Doing stuff, content outside. Yes. I, uh, I think there are, there are examples of that. Um, but I think it's something that could be done more. But nowadays the clubs are so strict, their players. Ah. And what interviews they can and they cannot do. Like look at the Lukaku thing. Last year, November, I think it was November. <laughs> Sky Sport, right? The Sky Sports <laughs> Italia. So he went and did that interview without the club's approval. So the clubs don't like this sort of thing. So if you want to do a piece with a play at home, can, but it has to be the club's approval. And secondly, I, it does actually happen. I've noticed, because I meet a lot of journalists, if it's a Brazilian player, example is Brazil. Brazilian player like Alisson playing in Liverpool. So the Brazilian reporters will quite often go to their house. Mm. Not often, but they will be given access to the house to do more of a... Uh, lifestyle piece mm -hmm. use they film him in his house with his mm -hmm. family with the club's approval because a brazilian market would be interested in that so it depends if there was a malaysian player playing in the premier league right now the, it depends on the club but chances are they would allow you to speak to him mm -hmm. to go to his house as opposed to just interviewing him at the club just so the market in his home country can appreciate it more i think Sebab kita nampak juga banyak uh, individual podcast yang channel, channel media sosial Banyak juga player yang involve dekat situ So sekarang <coughs> dia punya media tu dah makin besar kan Player dekat sana ada yang terkesan tak? Yang you you tahu setakat ni terkesan Ma MCG. Maybe dari segi kena kecaman daripada media yang yang bagi efek dia Media sosial punya impact ada tak? I think Phil Jones Yeah Maybe? Maybe. I, yeah. I saw the Instagram <coughs> Last at least 2017. They 17. Quit, they throw squid. I think now players are expected to have a social media presence and 
let's be honest, like Ronaldo offers you goals, but he also offers you marketing capabilities. So clubs will be looking at a player <laughs> and thinking, yeah, we could sell a lot of jerseys mm -hmm. that's going to generate more money and also to sponsors. It will make sponsors happy. So there's an obligation, but I don't think there's a lot of vile abuse or because when you go on social media, anyone can create an account, be anonymous and just say really disgusting things to mm -hmm. players or managers, or whatever. And it's not a good thing in that sense. But in the world now that we live in, players have to have some sort of social media presence. But a lot of it is managed by someone else, not them, yeah? Oh, someone, a company it. will be doing all of it or telling them what to say. Remember there was a case, who was it? It's someone I've worked with, Victor Nichibi. So Nichibi, okay. <laughs> it's quite famous because his tweet was, it starts with, hey, can you please tweet this later? And then the tweet. So he copy and paste the entire thing <laughs> to his Twitter. <laughs> So, Kantoi, right? Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, you look at the early days, there were some really stupid tweets. Like Wayne Rooney, you've seen his early tweets, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey Rio, need picking up for the morning. And then he, at Wayne Rooney himself, you better shut your mouth or I'm going to punch you. So he didn't understand how it worked. So he basically said he's going to punch himself because he tagged the, he replied the wrong way. So you have to be careful, right? <laughs> so for the last, uh, maybe you can berita berita tahu dekat fans fans kat luar bila you akan balik ke London dan mulakan kerja untuk EPL. Uh, Itu last untuk kau, belum last untuk aku. Now, when, <laughs> when, when does this go out? This tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow, so tomorrow. that means the Premier League is back. Uh, today is Tuesday, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, so today is Tuesday, Tuesday, and this will be Wednesday. A eh? Friday, Premier League is back. Uh, London derby, Crystal Palace. Also, who's at home? Also at home, right? Yeah. Also at home. Hey, Mr. Palace home. Oh, Mr. Palace. Palace. Okay, oh sorry. what a fan. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not doing studio for that. I'll be in the studio for <clears throat> Fulham Liverpool and the United game on Sunday. So it all starts. we got the World Cup coming up. Uh, a lot more. I mean, the Commonwealth Games is happening right now in Astro, yes. which is a lot of fun to watch. And hopefully, after the World Cup, we'll be back pitch side as well, at the side of the pitch. But I'm really excited. First time since COVID hit that we're going to have guests in the studio. Wow. Uh, Saturday, we've got a screening with John Barnes. Uh, he'll be doing a Lala Port. Yeah, he'll be doing a screening and he'll be with the fans as well, which is really cool. Okay, my last, last is question. your prediction. Top five and who's going to be the get it? Top four, the whole. Top four, la. okay, top four. Uh, Kalau top four, I, 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 I think I've said like three <laughs> times Manchester City, right? So Still that, champions. Still champions. I think I think they'll do the free peak. Unless they get really far in the Champions League and you know that's what they want. Okay. Uh, Liverpool, I think, will be second. Um, wait, wait, uh, Haaland or Darwin Nunez will flop and score more goals? I wouldn't say, I think both will be successes, but I just feel that City will score more goals over the course of the season with Haaland there. I, then again, last year, Liverpool scored a lot of goals as well. I think City. I think City with Haaland there. Because before this, I said, right, all their goals are spread. Yes, and last year, they scored and won the title without a recognised striker. Because Jesus was playing white. So imagine with Haaland. So I just think Haaland will score more. Uh, but Darwin Nunes will be good as well. My third place, I think I'm going to go to Spurs. <laughs> Why? Just because Conte. The Conte factor. Okay, betul. Um, in fourth place, third or fourth, I can see United finishing third or fourth and Spurs in the other position. I think Arsenal will Oh, just short. I think Arsenal. <laughs> Chelsea need to buy. Uh, need to wait to buy. Yeah, that's the thing. What's the date today? It's August the second, right? It's August second. Yeah. This could change, you know, because when the, the window is still open for slightly like less than a month, so if suddenly Chelsea bring in players, Better? then it might change. So I. They will really anytime. Yeah, exactly. I don't want anyone to look back at this in September. And say, ah, well, no. But right now, <laughs> right now, right now, right now, before they really purchase right anybody, second of August, before the season started, I think Chelsea will struggle and maybe finish six, and Arsenal will be above them. Um, but within the group as well, I think, uh, I think Villa will be looking to kick on at Newcastle. Newcastle has to point for Conference League. Yeah, I'm worried about Everton though. I'm yeah. a little bit worried about Everton in terms of what happened last year. They haven't really strengthened. They've got no money to spend because of financial fair play. Right. There's uh, their sponsorship issue because their major sponsor was linked with Russia and now that's been stopped. So I think they could be in trouble. I think so. Uh, the newly promoted teams. Last season, can like Brentford what You say second yang season syndrome. Newly right? promoted. Second season syndrome. Second season so. syndrome. Like look at Sheffield United. Like they did so well, and then they got relegated. Right. 
I don't know who's going to get relegated. I think it's Nottingham Forest when it's more players. Two, two United players. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't send loan. But in the past, like Scott Barker, who's at Bournemouth now, I think Bournemouth might struggle because of the quality of players they have. But I like him as a manager. When he was at Fulham, they also brought in like 12 players, right? Mm, but also Fulham bought, I think, over five, six players. But not as many as before. Yes. Because I think they bought too many and it, the team didn't gel. So it's really hard to say. Really, really hard to say. Well, we'll find out, I guess. That's why we love the Premier League. You? Uh, I think City still champion. City? Liverpool? Liverpool? Same, sama. Sama, sama. <laughs> Spurs? Arsenal. Spurs are surprising and I check out Spurs above Arsenal but I rasa I pun percaya pada Conte. Yeah. It and experience. We're buying experienced players. Yes. And I think Arsenal in 2-3 years are going to be really good. Arsenal dapat Ford pun for me dah memang kejayaan lah. Yeah. Being, but I, I'm the one yang tak berapa percaya Arteta lagi. Mm. So untuk dapat Ford place tu okay. Good. Alright. Relegated? Siapa? <coughs> relegated. I akan I rasa 3-3 team yang promoted akan relegated. No team for no team for this aku rasa tak. Fulham boleh my prediction. Yes. <laughs> what about Everton? What about Leeds? Leeds really struggled towards the end of last season, you know. And they've lost Rafinha. They've lost Calvin Phillips. They're two best players. But Benford come back from injury. I think Everton masih ada quality players. Ah, quality. Uh, I rasa yang promoted akan relegated. Okay, you uh, <laughs> top four first. Top four, I think uh, same. Liverpool, City, and Spurs will compete for the title. Kau kena buat prediction Siapa juara See I cannot say that Because uh. I'm a Spurs fan And we've always been let down So uh. that's why <laughs> Siapa juara <laughs> Aku masih uh. Yeah uh. prediction uh, I think uh, Masih rasa Conte akan buat kejutan So uh. Conte juara Aku Spurs rasa juara Spurs For the first time Second Second Liverpool City ada Diorang akan compete lah Predict Predict City lah <laughs> Tak Liverpool Liverpool Fort MU Fort MU Do you have MU fans Okay I need to put MU lah And relegated uh, two team promoted though. Uh, you said just now. Uh, Fulham and Fulham. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, for it, I think we'll stay. But then? Maybe Leeds or Slider, but Leeds. Bam- only Bamford come back and they've lost Rafinha. Uh, yeah. Something like Kevin Phillips. Kevin Phillips is gone. I mean, that's a big miss. Uh, that's huge. And they got a problem with left back, I think, still. Yeah. So, bila they hilang, lost, uh, Betty Bamford last season, injury, tak boleh nak score. So, they, yeah. But I hope they do well. I just spoke to Jesse Marsh last week and I love to talk to him. And I, Jesse, Jesse Marsh is a good manager. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. whether he has the players to be able to do what he wants and whether he's supported enough. But we'll see. We'll see. That's see it. Again. Hey guys, thank wow. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Seronok, seronok sangat. Sebab Banyak experience. Rasa tak nak berhenti cakap. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, experience dengan Adam yang bekerja di uh, EPL. So kita dapat share sama-sama. So thank you untuk korang semua. Jangan lupa download apps terbaru kami, uh, follow social media kami, uh, tekan button subscribe, tekan button loceng. Apa lagi kita ada konten-konten yang menarik. So this week, uh, selain EPL dan start, kita ada kita akan pergi ke two semi-final. FA Cup, Cup. Uh, Terengganu vs Selangor, Selangor dan juga Johor, Johor lawan Penang. Dan juga support atlet kita di Sukan Commonwealth, uh, Para Asian. Selagi ada nama Malaysia, di situ Harimau Malaya akan bersama anda. Okay, jumpa lagi untuk konten seterusnya. Assalamualaikum. Bye-bye. Bye.